Hello everyone and welcome to Bombless Dentistry. In this video, we'll talk about basal cell carcinoma. Now, basal cell carcinoma is the most common malignancy that occurs in humans. So, in this video, we'll talk about everything that you need to know about basal cell carcinoma. So, let's get started. Now, in this clinical picture, you can appreciate that here are the eyes and you can see here you can see an abnormal growth you can appreciate over here so basal cell carcinoma basically starts as these growth with although looks normal but after biopsy it may turn out to be basal cell carcinoma so basal cell carcinoma are the most common malignancy and the characteristic feature about basal cell carcinoma is that it mainly affects that part of the skin which is directly exposed mainly to sunlight for example face and feet especially the middle third of the face because that is the part which is commonly exposed to the sun which is the most common cause of basal cell carcinoma now basal cell carcinoma basically affects fair skinned people more as compared to other types so that is one feature to remember other than that an important feature of basal cell carcinoma is that it grows slowly as compared to other tumors which grow rapidly, basal cell carcinoma grows slowly. However, one very important feature that you should always remember of basal cell carcinoma is that it rarely metastasizes. Now, metastasize basically means that, for example, if the tumor is present over here, so the tumor cell can invade other tissues of the body, for example, bone, liver, and so on. So, an important feature of basal cell carcinoma is that it rarely metastasizes. Therefore, the prognosis is good when you're treating basal cell carcinoma. But when basal cell carcinoma, for example, is present over here, it can interfere and invade the adjacent tissue if you do not treat it timely. Therefore, it can lead to some disfigurement if you leave it untreated. Now, talking about the etiology of basal cell carcinoma, the most common etiology that you should remember and most of the cases of basal cell carcinoma arises from that etiology is ultraviolet radiation, the sun. That is the most common cause of basal cell carcinoma because when there is chronic exposure to the sun, so the skin which is exposed to the sun, for example face, so that is the skin which is most vulnerable to develop basal cell carcinoma. Now, the latency period of basal cell carcinoma is around 20 to 50 years so therefore it grows slowly and it takes it time to reach that size that can be clinically identified now there are some other causes of basal cell carcinoma for example in some cases of immunosuppression x-ray exposure and in exposure to some chemical for example arsenic so you can say that 90 percent of the cases of basal cell carcinoma will arise from ultraviolet radiation and 5 to 10 percent of the cases may arise from other causes as well now Basal cell carcinoma is associated with some syndromes, for example, nevoid basal cell carcinoma syndrome, xeroderma pigmentosum. So these are some cases or you can say some syndromes with which basal cell carcinoma is associated. Now, talking about the clinical features of basal cell carcinoma, basically basal cell carcinoma is divided into different subtypes. So therefore, the clinical features vary amongst different types of basal cell carcinoma. However, in this clinical picture, you can appreciate that this is the middle third of the face, and you can appreciate that there is rolled margin and there is central ulceration which is present over here. So, this is the most common appearance of basal cell carcinoma. So, basal cell carcinoma basically arises around fourth decade of life and so on. So, in younger patients, arising of basal cell carcinoma is rare as compared to an older individual because there is chronic exposure to sun. And as we have talked before, the latency period of basal cell carcinoma is quite long. Now, if you talk about male to female ratio, it's roughly around 3 to 2, like being almost similar. Now, if you talk about the area where basal cell carcinoma arises, basically it's the middle third of the face that is commonly affected. However, as we have talked before, any surface of the skin that is directly exposed, for example, to sun, can be affected and can lead to basal cell carcinoma. However, Basal cell carcinoma does not arise from the oral mucosa. So, if you're talking from dentistry point of view, it does not arise from within the mouth. 
although in some case reports or in you can say very 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 rarely you can you may appreciate some basal cell carcinoma however like you can say more than 99 percent of the cases will not arise from oral mucosa if talking from dentistry point of view it can arise from middle third of the face as you can see in this clinical picture now talking about the different subtypes of basal cell carcinoma the most commonly encountered in clinical practices is called as nodular basal cell carcinoma then we have pigmented basal cell carcinoma we have cystic basal cell carcinoma superficial basal cell carcinoma micro nodular basal cell carcinoma more from an infiltrating basal cell carcinoma so these are the different subtypes and we'll talk about each of them in detail now in this clinical picture, you can appreciate that there is some elevation or you can say a papule or plaque-like lesion which you can see and it appears abnormal as compared to the adjacent area. So this is called as nodular basal cell carcinoma. It is the most common amongst all of the basal cell carcinoma subtypes and it usually begins as you can see slightly elevated papule and this papule will eventually ulcerate and break and then you appreciate some bleeding which also be occurring over here for example there's some minor trauma touching over this area of the skin it will lead to bleeding now it enlarges initially and it will then lead to bleeding and then it will start to heal as well now after certain period of time this ulceration will eventually become smooth and there will be rolled margins over here which will give us an idea that the patient might be suffering from basal cell carcinoma now if you leave this lesion untreated it may infiltrate the adjacent area erode the underlying bone for example if it's occurring in the face it can erode the underlying maxilla cartilages which are present but it rarely metastasizes so these are certain points about nodular basal cell carcinoma that you should know because this is the most common type of basal cell carcinoma Next, if you see in this clinical picture, we can appreciate that this is the middle third of the face and now if you appreciate, there is this lesion which is present over here. However, the color of this lesion is quite different. Therefore, the name derives pigmented basal cell carcinoma, which have similar features to nodular basal cell carcinoma. However, the difference arises in the color, which is the most distinguishing feature between nodular and pigmented basal cell carcinoma so in cases of pigmented basal cell carcinoma you can see that there is this blackish brownish appearance which is the characteristic feature of this subtype of basal cell carcinoma now another important thing to note is that this particular subtype of basal cell carcinoma is more common in dark skinned individuals as compared to other types so these are two features which are very important which helps us in distinguishing between nodular and pigmented type of basal cell carcinoma now talking about cystic basal cell carcinoma it is quite similar to nodular basal cell carcinoma however the only difference is that there is translucent or blue cystic nodules and it may mimic benign cystic lesion as well so these cases are very very rare and we do not encounter that frequently in our clinical practices now in this clinical picture you can appreciate that there is a scan and between that we have some irregular lesion which are present over it and it's quite ill-defined you can see that it's certain plaque like a papule like which is flat and it is quite superficial therefore the name derives superficial basal cell carcinoma and this you can see that there is scaly patches or papules which are present as compared to the adjacent skin now these lesion are you can say pink and red brown in color and you can see there is a central lesion where there is no lesion and it's quite clear so this is the characteristic appearance of superficial basal cell carcinoma at times you can also appreciate thread like border as well and this subtype of basal cell carcinoma has little tendency to invade adjacent structures as compared to other subtypes of basal cell carcinoma now since this is reddish pink in appearance so it may mimic psoriasis or eczema but this slowly progresses as compared to the other conditions now in this clinical picture again you can appreciate that there is this nodule which is present over here and then undergoing biopsy it will be micro nodular basal cell carcinoma now this is an important subtype of basal cell carcinoma because this is aggressive in nature as compared to 
other subtypes of basal cell carcinoma. Now, this lesion is quite rare to ulcerate as compared to other types of basal cell carcinoma. Well, now when this will stretch this area, it will basically appear yellow in color and on palpation clinically, it will appear firm and you can also appreciate that as clinical picture, the borders are quite well defined. So that is one of the important features of nodular basal cell carcinoma. Now, talking about the last subtype of basal cell carcinoma is the morphium form and infiltrating basal cell carcinoma. As you can see in this clinical picture, you can see these small lesions which are present over here near the upper lip. However, similar to micronodular basal cell carcinoma, this is aggressive in nature. But another important difference between this and micronodular is that the borders now are not that well defined and plaque and papules like as compared to micronodular where the borders were well defined now. These lesions as compared to micronodular ulcerate, it will bleed and then lead to crusting as you can see in this clinical picture. And in time, since this appearance is quite similar to scar, so we can mistakenly think that this might be a scar tissue. However, it might be morphiform or infiltrating basal cell carcinoma. Now, moving on towards the differential diagnosis, because differential diagnosis forms a very important part when you're diagnosing any condition so that you can rule out other possible conditions. So, now talking about differential diagnosis, firstly, there can be actinic keratosis. Bounds disease, keratotic anthoma, melanocystic nevi, sebaceous hyperplasia, and lastly, squamous cell carcinoma. So, you have to rule out these conditions and then eventually reach the diagnosis of basal cell carcinoma. Now, talking about histopathology of basal cell carcinoma, because there are different subtypes of basal cell carcinoma, the histopathological feature will vary among different subtypes. But if we talk about the general feature which can be appreciated in most of the times in different subtypes of basal cell carcinoma is firstly nesting in islands which can be appreciated as you can see in this basaloid cell in the dermis. So this is one feature which can be appreciated. Next we have peripheral chromatin condensation which you can also appreciate in these nuclei which are present and they are, you can see they are darkened as compared to normal tissue. So that is one feature which you can appreciate here as well. At times, there may be stromal fibrosis as well, which is not quite evident in this histopathological slide, but it is common in basal cell carcinoma. At times, you can also appreciate that there may be some clefting and reabsorption, for example, in a basal cell carcinoma, which is invading adjacent structure, there may be tissue resorption as well. Now, since there is inflammation going on, bleeding going on, so you can appreciate that for example, there are different inflammatory cells which are invading the tumor and that is leading to that peritumoral inflammatory response. So that is also an important feature. But there are certain features which may vary between different subtypes of basal cell carcinoma and they are quite unique to each subtype. Now, one important thing that you should remember that differentiating squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma is that in basal cell carcinoma, there is no keratinization. However, in squamous cell carcinoma, there are keratinization as you can appreciate keratin pearls in squamous cell carcinoma. So that is one very important point that you should remember is that in basal cell carcinoma, there is no keratinization, but in squamous cell carcinoma, there is keratinization in the form of keratin pearls. So this is one very important feature that you should remember. And like in most malignancies, Mitotic stickers can also appreciate as you can see there are lots of pink lesions you can appreciate or you can say pink dividing cells. These are mitotic figures which can be appreciated in basal cell carcinoma. So these are certain general features about basal cell carcinoma that you should remember and there are certain specific features which is unique to each type of basal cell carcinoma. Now lastly talking about treatment and prognosis of basal cell carcinoma. The most important treatment for this lesion is surgical excision and radiotherapy. So, for any tumor, surgery is of extreme importance in cases of basal cell carcinoma so that there is complete relief and preventing recurrence from the lesion. And at times, radiotherapy can also be very useful. But 
when it occurs on the face it is very important to maintain aesthetics so holes micrographic surgery can be of very helpful modality as it decreases the formation of scar tissue and decreases the chances of disfigurement of the face so this is a very important thing which you should keep in mind other than that we can also go for curatage and electro dissection of the tumors therefore reducing the chances of recurrence as well and it's common in tumors which are decreased chances of recurrence as well now you can also go for some topical treatment for example 5 fluorouracil these are some drugs which can be provided to the patient so that until and unless surgery is performed patient can perform this topical treatment so that it prevents the further growth of, of basal cell carcinoma and the patient can be prepped for surgery now if we talk about the prognosis generally the prognosis of basal cell carcinoma is quite good because this tumor rarely metastasizes so when a treatment is performed for the patient they generally respond well and there are less chances of recurrence keeping in mind that proper surgery is performed so in this video we talked about in depth really everything related to basal cell carcinoma starting from the introduction what actually is basal cell carcinoma then we talked about its etiology we talked about clinical features then we talked about in detail different clinical features of each type of basal cell carcinoma then we talked about differential diagnosis then we talked about histopathology and then finally we talked about treatment and prognosis so i hope this video was useful for you and if you like this video please like share subscribe and press the bell icon thank you for watching this video see you next time